Dr. Reddy. Okay. Good morning, and welcome to another lecture given by Meridian Soul School of the Highest Learning. First of all, this is a school and not a church. Neither are we associated with any religious organization, Jehovah's Witnesses, or any other denomination you have taught in the world today. Now, this school was established in the year of 1931 by Dr. Henry C. Kinley, who had a divine vision and revelation direct from Yahweh. And the charts you see pictorially illustrated are results of that divine vision and revelation. I will be explaining the name you see here. Now, Yahweh is the true and correct name of our Heavenly Father, which was once laid down in the scripture. We have Yahweh symbolized as a cloud on this chart because Yahweh symbolized himself as a cloud in many parts of your Bible. We have the cloud extending all around the edge of the chart, so that everything on the chart is within the cloud. Just as everything that exists exists within the pure spirit state of Yahweh. Now, in this pure spirit state, Yahweh has no restricted shape or form in which he is up from a source and substance, the limits and the bounds of everything that exists. Now, when your translators have come across the true and correct name of our Heavenly Father Yahweh, they have usually inserted the English title, Lord. Yahweh taking on a superincorporeal shape and form within himself, known as the word of Son, is Elohim. Now, superincorporeal means without physical flesh and blood. And in this state, Yahweh Elohim can only be seen in a divine vision and revelation, as stated in Exodus 24, 9 and 10. Then with Moses, Aaron, Nadab, and Abihu, and seven of the elders of Israel, and they saw the Elohim of Israel. Now, remember, they saw Elohim in a divine vision and revelation. Now, when your translators have come across the true and correct divine title for Yahweh in shape and form known as Elohim, they have usually inserted the English title, God. Yahweh Elohim manifested in the physical body of the Savior of the world is Yahshua the Messiah, as stated in John 1 and 1. In the beginning was the Word. The Word was with Yahweh, and the Word was Yahweh. And in the 14th verse, and the Word was made flesh and dwelt among us, and we beheld his glory. The Lord has of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. Now, when your translators has come across the true and correct name of our Savior, Yahshua the Messiah, they have usually inserted false and erroneous names such as Jesus Christ. Remember, Yahweh in pure spirit as the Father, Yahweh in a superincorporated shape and form known as the Word of the Son is Elohim, and Yahweh manifested in a physical body as the Savior of the world is Yahshua the Messiah. Yahweh in his two manifestations, but one spirit, as stated in 1 John 5 and 7. But there are three that bear reckoning in heaven, the Father, the Word, and the Holy Spirit. And these three are one. Now, my investigation on your part proved to you beyond a shadow of a doubt that the name and title we teach here are true and correct, but that the names and titles that you have taught in the world are false and erroneous. For example, look up the letter J. It is not and never has been in any part of the Hebrew language. It did not come into existence in any language prior to the Middle Ages. Therefore, such names as Jehovah and Jesus are impossible in as I have for the true and correct name, Yahweh and his son, Yahshua the Messiah. Our aim, the primary constitutional objectives of the Institute are as follows. First, to help you find and know. Yahweh, I owe him as he really is and actually exists. Second, to form a nucleus of universal brotherhood of humanity in Yahshua the Messiah without the distinction of race, nationality, sex, creed, caste, or color. Third, to investigate the unexplained spirit law or so-called laws of nature and powers laden in man. Fourth, to encourage and promote the study of the scriptures compared to religion, psychology, philosophy, modern, practical, and occult science. Fifth, to extirpate current superstition, skepticism, and ignorance. Six, to learn, know, and understand the operation of Yahweh's eternal purpose through the dispensation and ages. Seven, to discern and avoid being deceived by Lucifer, the serpent, the devil, the dragon, or Satan and his demons operating the mystery of iniquity on earth through the dispensation of time. Eight, to earnestly contend for the common salvation and faith which was once delivered unto the sons or children of Yahweh. Night to make known that Yahweh from the beginning ordained that there is no other name given among men whereby man must be saved, saving the name of Yahshua the Messiah. Intent to inherit eternal life now, 
in the kingdom of Yahshua Messiah with the hope of immoral glorification in the new earth state. Our wife's word is peace and our slogan to speak the truth. We have prayer. Dr. Miranda Gonzalez, scripture lesson by Dr. Vanessa Cotton. Scripture lesson will be 2 Corinthians, the second chapter. 1 Corinthians. 1 Corinthians, the second chapter. Good morning, class. Let us bow our heart and mind this morning for prayer. Our most gracious Heavenly Father, Yahweh, we are again thankful that you woke us this morning still with soundness of mind, still with the knowledge of the truth in us, still with a sincere desire to see and understand your purpose being unfolded. We are thankful for your wisdom, your knowledge and understanding in this last day and time that you have poured out unto the sons for giving us this heavenly gift, this divine wisdom and understanding that will preserve us during these perilous times that you have foretold us of. Thankful for the intelligence that you have bestowed upon the sons and the continuous purging that you have made us to understand is necessary. So as we gather together this morning, we are thankful for the hearts that you have moved to be with us this morning, whether via Zoom or YouTube. And as we gather, we ask for stillness, for quietness of mind that we can see, hear, and perceive the things that are to pre be presented by the Holy Spirit in us. These and our blessings we ask in our son's name, Yahshua the Messiah. Let us all say, hallelujah. 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 Good morning. Scripture lesson for this morning is 1 Corinthians 2nd chapter. I will be reading from the Holy Name Bible containing the Holy Name version of the Old and New Testaments critically compared with ancient authorities and various manuscripts revised by the late A.B. Trainum, the Scripture Research Association Incorporated. 1 Corinthians 2nd chapter. And I, brethren, when I came to you, I came not with excellency of speech or of wisdom, declaring unto you the testimony of Yahweh. For I determined not to know anything among you, save Yahshua the Messiah and him crucified. And I was with you in weakness and in fear and in much trembling. Then my speech and my preaching was not with enticing words of man's wisdom, but in demonstration of the spirit and of power, that your faith should not stand in the wisdom of men, but in the power of Yahweh. How be it, we speak wisdom among them that are perfect, yet not the wisdom of this age, nor of the rulers of this age that come to naught. But we speak the wisdom of Yahweh hidden in a mystery, which Yahweh hath ordained before the ages unto our glory, which none of the rulers of this age knew. For had they known it, they would not have crucified the king of glory. But as it is written, I has not seen nor ear heard, neither have entered into the heart of man the things which Elohim hath prepared for them that love him. But Yahweh hath revealed them unto us by his spirit. For the spirit searcheth all things, yea, the deep things of Yahweh. For what man knoweth the things of a man save the spirit of man which is in him? Even so, the things of Elohim knoweth no man, but the spirit of Elohim. Now we have received not the spirit of the world, but the spirit which is of Elohim, 
that we might know the things that are freely given to us of Yahweh, which things also we speak, not in the words which man's wisdom teacheth, but which the Holy Spirit teacheth, revealing spiritual things to spiritual persons. But the natural man receiveth not the things of the Spirit of Yahweh, for they are foolishness unto him. Neither can he know them, because they are spiritually discerned. But he that is spiritual judgeth all things, yet he himself is judged of no man. For who hath known the mind of Yahweh that he may teach it? But we who have the mind of the Messiah. 1 Corinthians 2nd chapter. All right, hallelujah. All right, good morning, class. My name is Carla Carter. I'll be the host for this morning slash afternoon's lecture. Our first speaker for this morning's lecture will be from Meridian Soul, Dr. Alfred Craig. Alfred, if you can unmute yourself for me. I'd like to say good morning to everyone. I'm thankful to be able to testify to the things that <clears throat> Yahweh has revealed unto me. Give me uh, Exodus, the uh, third chapter. Sorry, Can you hear me? Yeah, Exodus yeah. three and one. Uh -huh. We hear you. Uh -huh. Exodus three and one. Now Moses kept the flock of Jethro, his father-in-law, the priest of Midian. And he led the flock to the backside of the desert and came to the mountain of Elohim, even to Horeb. And the angel of Yahweh appeared unto him in a flame of fire out of the midst of a bush. And he looked and behold, the bush burned with fire and the bush was not consumed. And Moses said, I will now turn aside to see this great sight while the bush does not burn. And when Yahweh saw that he turned aside to see, Elohim called unto him out of the midst of the bush and said, Moses, Moses. And he said, here am I. And he said, draw not nigh hither, put off thy shoes from off thy feet. For the place whereon thou standest is holy ground. Moreover, he said, I am the Elohim of thy father the Elohim of Abraham, the Elohim of Isaac, and the Elohim of Jacob. And Moses hid his face, for he was afraid to look upon Elohim. Um, and Yahweh... Now go give me this. Paul's going to give me John 424. See what Elohim is. Yeah. John 424. For Elohim is spirit. And they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. Paul, oh, so that's what Elohim is. So he's telling Moses, he's the spirit of Abraham, the spirit of Isaac, and the spirit of Jacob. We must worship him in spirit and truth in the Isaiah 11 chapter. And I want you to read all the way down. That talks about the Gentiles. For you, pause. When you get to that, pause. Now we find trying to find out that Elohim is spirit. Now we're going to show you what spirit is. And also, when we tell you what spirit is and show you what spirit is, that means you should walk in that. Just don't let it be a word. So we must worship Him in the spirit and in truth. Now lie, that spirit too. And I'm going to touch on that too. Because a lot of people in class, they still want to holler about, well, they in the flesh, and they in the flesh. But every time you lie to one, or you participate to try to deceive one, then that's lying. That's in the spirit. But then they'll turn right around and act as though it is in the kingdom of Yahweh. And that's not the case. We don't. Isaiah 11 and 1. And there shall come forth a rod out of the stem of Jesse, and a branch shall grow out of his roots, and the spirit of Yahweh shall rest upon him, 
the spirit Pause of right there. Let me get on me. Pause right there. Let me get this one in there too. Before I get going here, give me John 5 39. That's what we are reading. They are testifying to the Messiah. But read John 5 39 for me. John 5 39. You search the scriptures, for in them you think you have eternal life. And they are they which testify of me. So when we go and back here and we were, read these things in the law and the testimony, and particularly when we read here in Isaiah, that's testifying to the Messiah. You know, this showing the lineage of push forth, he's going to be born out of the flesh. Read on. Read on. He searched the scriptures, for in them you think you have eternal life, and they are they which testify of me. And you will not come to me that you might have life. I receive not in order to come to the Messiah, in order to come to the Messiah to have life, you must know what the Messiah is and how he operates and how he functions. And that's one reason we go back to the law and to the testimony. Go back then, Isaiah. Finish reading. Isaiah 11 and 1. And you there shall come forth a rod out of the stem of Jesse, and a branch shall grow out of his roots. The spirit of and the spirit of Yahweh shall rest upon him, the spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of counsel and might, the spirit of knowledge and of the fear oh. of Yahweh. Is it a spirit of counsel and a spirit of might? Mm -hmm. And we say we have the spirit of Yahweh in us. And why would we counsel anyone to lie about anything? Why we participate and try to deceive one and we're giving them counsel. And that's not of Yahweh. That's not of the adversary. Now you can justify your reasoning for doing it, but you have to at some point you have to get real and quit lying to ourselves. Read. The spirit of counsel and might the spirit of knowledge and of the fear of Yahweh and shall make him of quick understanding in the fear of Yahweh and he shall not judge after the sight of his eyes oh, neither quick understanding in the fear of Yahweh. So you tell me when you stand boldly and lie to someone, you don't fear no consequences of that. And many of us will tell the same yeah. For 40 years, you have no remorse. Y'all would give you the opportunity to come clean about the situation. And then we want to talk about the ever presence of Yahweh because you don't call right. our hand to these things. You understand? Mm -hmm. Read. And shall make him of quick understanding in the fear of Yahweh, and he shall not judge after the sight of his eyes neither beside after the hearing of his ears. Hold up, hold up. He would not judge after the sight of his eyes. See, I don't look at a physical body. I look at that body and say, well, because that's a, you know, he's a son of Yahweh, he's in claim. I judge about what come out of your mouth. If you lie to me, I don't care if you're in class or out of class. That's what in you lying is that adversary. You understand? Read. And he shall not judge after the sight of his eyes, neither decide after the hearing of his ears, but with righteousness shall he judge the poor and decide with equity for the meek of the earth. And he shall smite the earth with the rod of his mouth and with the breath of his lips shall he slay the wicked. Oh, yeah. And what do you mean, uh... Right there, just another thing Yahweh was showing you too about. Uh, I want you to get somebody to go find uh, Yahweh talks about, I think it's in Isaiah somewhere, that he would, he would speak to the wicked. He would speak to them face to face. And I wish I could find it. But please read where you're at there. Okay, um, fourth verse. 
but with righteousness shall he judge the poor and decide with equity. Hold up. I know where it was at. I know where it was at. Deuteronomy okay. 7 and 10 right quick. Hold where you at. Okay. Because we still got y'all up in the abstract somewhere. Because we will use words like this about it ain't in the flesh, no one ain't in the flesh, in the spirit. And we think we're going to say it, but in our heart and mind, we still got them in the abstract and thank y'all we don't see us sitting off in the early vessel. Let me do the rhyming, y'all. Uh, right, cool. Deuteronomy 7 Deuteronomy. and 9. Know therefore that Yahweh thy Elohim, he is Elohim, the faithful El which keepeth covenant and mercy with them that love him and keep his commandments to a thousand generations and repayeth them that hate him to their face to destroy them. He will hold not up. be... Yahweh, hold up. Yahweh will tell you exactly, you understand, how we are, what we are doing, and why we are doing what we are doing. And then for you to turn around and call Yahweh a devil because he does that, and you telling me you don't understand spirit, the very thing that you've been preaching about, you understand, and trying to get somebody to believe in Yahweh, you understand? Yahweh means what he says, and says what he means, you understand? And Yahweh's putting these things out here this morning, Yahweh's putting these things out here this morning, because we all need to get these things straight, you understand? Who are you reading in Deuteronomy? Seven and nine. Seven and nine. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you. Know therefore that Yahweh thy Elohim, he is Elohim, the faithful El, which keepeth covenant and mercy with them that love him and keep his commandments to a thousand generations and repayeth them that hate him to their face to destroy them. He will not be slack to him that hateth him. He will repay him to his face. Thou shalt therefore keep the commandments and the statutes and the judgments which I command thee this day to do them. Wherefore, so when I was telling you something that's right and true, you understand, that's for you to do it and to obey it. Not to be hollering about, oh, it ain't in the flesh, it ain't in the flesh. You understand? If somebody, you go steal a physical car, that's wrong. You ain't gonna tell nobody where well, I don't miss my car, you understand? Because it's physical. You obey Yahweh. So I'm not, you wanna talk about your conduct out there in the world? Read. Wherefore, if Read your yet. to pass, if you hearken to these judgments, and keep and do them, that Yahweh thy Elohim shall keep unto thee the covenant and the mercy which he swear unto thy fathers. And he will we learn. Read the last class. We had a real last class scripture lesson. It says, by mercy and truth, iniquity is purged. That's right. By mercy and truth, iniquity is purged. Not by deceiving, lying. Go back and uh, where you was, Miranda, in there in Isaiah. Isaiah, Isaiah eleven and five. And the right and the and righteousness shall be the gird of his loins, and faithfulness the girdle of his reins. The righteousness. All... Hold up, righteousness, faithfulness, faithfulness, not unfaithfulness. Read. The wolf also shall dwell with the lamb, and the leopard shall lie down with the kid, and the calf and the young lion and the fatling together, and a little child shall lead them. And the cow and the bear shall feed, their, their young ones shall lie down together, and the lion shall eat straw like the ox. And the suckling child shall play on the hole of the asp, and the and the lean child shall put his hand on the adder's den. They shall not hurt nor destroy in all my holy mountain, 
for the earth shall be full of the knowledge of Yahweh as the waters over the sea. And that's what we want to impart unto all the listeners is the knowledge of Yahweh. Read. And in that day, hmm. And in that day, there shall be a root of Jesse, which shall stand for an enzyme of the people. To it, sh to it shall the Gentiles seek. To and it his, shall the Gentiles seek. Right. Yeah. And his rest shall be glorious. And, and it shall come. The Gentiles are going to bear the rest, but they're going to realize that the Yahweh is going to tell the truth of matter. And not for them to be offering up no laws and bullocks what they gave to Israel and Israel only. They was going to be drafted in through faith. That is the rest for the Gentile. Give me uh, Isaiah, Jeremiah 16, 19. Jeremiah 16, 19. O oh, Yahweh, my strength and my fortress and my refuge in the day of affliction. The Gentiles shall come unto thee from the ends of the earth and shall say, Surely our fathers have inherited lies, vanity, and things wherein there is no profit. There is no profit for you to go try to dump a man in some physical water and think he's going to be clean of his sins. You understand? That's the lie that they're telling you out there in Christian to this day and many other religious organizations. Those corner ordinances weren't given to you anyway. It was only types in the shadow to point up to the spiritual reality of Yahweh. You understand? Read on. 20th verse. Shall a man make idols unto himself and that are not Elohim? Therefore, behold, I will, I will this once cause them to know. I will cause them to know mine hand and my might. And they shall know that my name is Yahweh. Now read on back there next. We're going to get to the name. Exodus 3 and, excuse me, Exodus 3 and 2. And the angel so Jeremiah of Yahweh was prophesizing that he was going to let them know, you understand, the true name of Yahweh. Read. And the angel of Yahweh appeared unto him in a flame of fire out of, the, out of the midst of a bush. And he looked, and behold, the bush burned with fire, and the bush was not consumed. And Moses said, I will now turn aside and see this great sight, why the bush does not burn. And when Yahweh saw, that he turned aside to see. Elohim called unto him out of the midst of the bush and said, Moses, Moses. And he said, here am I. And he said, draw not nigh hither, put off thy shoes from off thy feet, for the place whereon thou standest is holy ground. Moreover, he said, I am the Elohim of thy father, the Elohim of Abraham, the Elohim of Isaac, and the Elohim of Jacob. And Moses hid his face, for, for he was afraid to look upon Elohim. And Yahweh said, I have surely seen the affliction of my people which are in Egypt, and have heard their cry by reason of their taskmasters, for I know their sorrows. And I am come down to deliver them out of the hand of the Egyptians, and to bring them up out of that land into a good land and a large into Hold a land pause. out of the hand of the Egyptians, because Yahweh mm -hmm. knew he had prophesied to Abraham that he was going to send them down into a land. But then Yahweh knew what he was there was in bondage to. It is high time, people, that we see the things that hold us in bondage. Go back to this line thing. What's in you that will make you want to lie about anything? Obviously, you're still in bondage to it. For something. Read. Exodus 3 and 8. And I am come down to deliver them out of the hand of the Egyptians 
and to bring them up out of that land unto a good land and a large, unto a land flowing with milk and honey, unto the place of the Canaanites and the Hittites and the Amorites and the Perizzites and the Hivites and the Jebusites. Now, therefore, behold, the cry of the children of Israel is come unto me. And I have also seen the oppression wherewith the Egyptians oppressed them. Come now, therefore, and I will send thee unto Pharaoh, that thou mayest bring forth my people, the children of Israel, out of Egypt. And Moses said unto Elohim, Who am I that I should go unto Pharaoh, and that I should bring forth the children of Israel out of Egypt? And he said, Certainly, I will be with thee. And this shall be a token unto thee that I have sent thee. When thou hast brought forth the children out of Egypt, ye shall serve Elohim upon this mountain. And Moses said unto Elohim, Behold, when I come unto the children of Israel, and shall say unto them, The Elohim of your fathers has sent me unto you, and they shall say to me, What is his name? What shall I say unto them? And Elohim said unto Moses, Aya Asher Aya. And he said, Thus shalt thou say unto the children of Israel, I will be hath sent me unto you. And Elohim said moreover unto Moses, Thus shalt thou say unto the children of Israel, Yahweh, the Elohim of your fathers, the Elohim of Abraham, the Elohim of Isaac, and the Elohim of Jacob, hath sent me unto you. Right. This, he told Moses to tell him that his name was Yahweh. Right. And that is the true and correct name of our Heavenly Father, whom you must worship him in spirit and in truth. We know. This is my name forever. This is my and name this, forever. Be. And this is my memorial unto all generations. Go and gather the elders of Israel together and say unto them, Yahweh Elohim of your fathers, the Elohim of Abraham, of Isaac, and of Jacob appeared unto me, saying, I have surely remembered you and seen that which is done to you in Egypt. Okay, now pick it up where he give uh, Moses some signs when he was going down to Egypt to take me. To demonstrate to the people that he had met with Yahweh. Okay. Fourth, fourth chapter, Exodus 4 and 1. And Moses and then answered once again, him, people, we keep, we keep talking about how we are the sons of Yahweh. And we are walking in the spirit. And it should be some demonstration of that. We. And Moses answered and said, But behold, they will not believe me, nor hearken unto my voice, but they will say, Yahweh hath not appeared unto thee. And Yahweh said unto him, What is that in thine hand? And he said, A rod. Hold up, hold, hold, hold up. We want to preach to the people in the world. But there again, we don't show forth no changes that we have made by the name of Yahweh. You understand? The first thing they're looking at you, your conduct and behavior. You understand? Right. I never tell somebody it's okay to do something that I know is wrong. Somebody that ain't in the flesh no more. It's in the spirit. If it's wrong, I'm going to tell you it's wrong. Now, whether you do it or not, that's between you and Yahweh. I'm not going to co-sign on something that is not right. right. Or you're going to be mm -hmm. a participant in it. You understand? Read. And Yahweh said unto him, What is that in thine hand? And he said, A rod. And he said, Cast it on the ground. And he cast it on the ground, and it became a serpent, and Moses fled listen, from people. Listen, people. You cannot take this truth, you understand, and cast it down like that. It will right. become a serpent unto you. Now, that's mm -hmm. spirit law. You right. raise this thing up to the truth and reality of the situation. You understand? Read. 
and it became a and he cast it on the ground and it became a serpent and Moses fled from before it. And Yahweh said, John offered to your carnal thoughts and carnal interpretation about things. You think it's okay to do this, that, and the other. Yahweh ain't never taught that. Mm-hmm. Yahweh right. told us not to do things. A lot of people now then got so up in themselves and that guy we don't supposed to tell us what we should and shouldn't be doing. <laughs> okay. The first mistake you make, you think there's somebody telling you that, but then you want to holler about the heavenly presence of Yahweh. Right. Read. And Yahweh said unto Moses, put forth thine hand and, and take it by the tail and he put forth his hand and caught it, and, and it became a rod in his hand. Pick up that, these lies. I don't care who they're coming from. Yeah. Read. That they may believe that Yahweh, Elohim of their fathers, the Elohim of Abraham, the Elohim of Isaac, and the Elohim of Jacob hath appeared unto thee. And Yahweh said furthermore unto him, Put now thine hand into thy bosom. And he put it his hand into his bosom. And when he took it out, behold, his hand was leprous as snow. And he said, Put thine hand into thy bosom again. And he put it, and he put his hand in his bosom again and plucked it out of his bosom. And behold, it was turned again as his other flesh. And it came. And it shall come to pass if they will not believe thee, neither hearken to the voice of the first son, that they will believe the voice of the latter son. And it shall come to pass if they will not believe also these two signs, neither hearken unto thy voice, that thou that thou shalt take of the water of the river. And pour it upon the dry land, and the water which thou takest out of the river shall become blood upon the dry land. And Moses said unto Yahweh, But O Yahweh, I am not eloquent, neither heretofore nor since thou hast spoken unto thy servant, but I am slow of speech and of a slow tongue. Hold up now, that fits right into the scripture lesson that we just heard. Paul said it. He didn't try to come with them with excellent speech. And when you follow the Holy Spirit, people, it will lead you to where we need to go. Right. If y'all would just give me another one, go pick up. We're going to pause. We're going to come back there. But I want to hear this one. Give me uh, Isaiah 59. We'll pick it up. About the 12th verse. In conjunction with something I had said earlier about a matter of two or more witnesses, let a matter be established. Please. Isaiah 59 and 12 For our transgressions are multiplied before thee and our sins testify against us for our transgressions are with us and as for our iniquities we know them <laughs> and transgressing and lying against Yahweh and departing away from our Elohim. So once again, Speaking. if you know your transgression, and then Yahweh points them out to you, and you know them, why you turn around or get mad and call Yahweh a devil for doing it? Mm-hmm. If you truly know it. Mm-hmm. I would give you the answer to that. Either you are real or you're not real. But we know. In transgressing and lying against Yahweh and departing away from our Elohim, speaking oppression and revolt, conceiving and uttering from the heart words of falsehood. And judgment is turned away backward. And justice standeth afar off. Hold up, and then Yahweh over there said, We shall judge now. We shall judge the angels. Because that's the problem. You should judge angels. But you got it all down in the flesh thinking some man trying to judge you about something. You understand? 
to the spirit of truth. You understand? Because it already know what you have done. And when I say right. you have done, he already know what we have all done. You understand? Read. And judgment is turned away backwards, and justice standeth far off, for truth is fallen in the street, and equity cannot enter. Yea, truth faileth, and he that departeth from evil maketh himself a prey. Mm. <laughs> Yahweh saw it, and it displeased him that there was no judgment. And he saw that there was no man and wondered that there was no intercessor. Therefore, his arm brought salvation unto oh, him. And whether you believe it or not, if the Holy Spirit is making intercession for us all, even as I speak. But that's what it was set up to do. And it will be faithful in doing. You understand? Read. And he saw that there was no man and wondered that there was no intercessor. Therefore, his arm brought salvation unto him and his righteousness, it sustained him. For he put on righteousness Keep in mind, as a breastplate. These scriptures, mm. Keeps in mind, these scriptures are talking about testifying of the Messiah. Read. For he put on righteousness as a breastplate and an helmet of salvation upon his head. And he put on the garments of vengeance for clothing and was clad with zeal as a cloak. According to their deeds, accordingly, he will repay fury to his adversaries, recompense to his enemies, to the islands, he will repay recompense. Holy, so shall they look. Don't just leave that back there. You understand, no. back there in that age, people wondering what's going on over in Israel this day. You understand? Y'all will have no problem. You go back and read in Lord and the Prophet what he did to his enemy. You understand me? Read on. So shall they fear the name of Yahweh from the west and his glory Hold up. Do you, fear, do you fear the name of Yahweh? <laughs> go on back there. I'm going to be in and out with this. Uh, go on back there uh, where you were, uh, Miranda. Uh, Exodus 4 and 4 and 8. 11. 11. You're yeah, right. You're at 11. Mm -hmm. Okay. Exodus 4 and 11. And Yahweh said unto him, Who hath made man's mouth? Or who maketh the dumb, or death, or the seeing, or the blind? Have not I, Yahweh? Hold up. No. See, you see, you still, people still learn to connect all these classes together. And there, when I think of when the scripture lesson, it said the preparation of the heart, you understand, comes from Yahweh. Right. You understand, Yahweh prepared me to say what I'm saying or to use me to speak what I was going to speak this day. If this, this ain't start, you understand, this morning because I was called upon. Read. Now, therefore, go, and I will be with thy oh. mouth. Mm. And Yahweh just put it on me, everyone in their heart and mind. And what's your answer going to be to what you're hearing? Right now, mm -hmm. if we think our thoughts are hid from y'all, what is your answer going to be? Read 12th verse. Now, therefore, go and I will be with thy mouth and teach thee what thou shalt say. And he said, Oh, Yahweh, send out that's my testimony, that's my testimony. Yahweh teaches me constantly how to walk in the spirit, mm -hmm. how to talk in the spirit, mm -hmm. how to live and have my being in the spirit. You understand? That is, and that is not going to change until I take this body completely off. 
Right. I'm not going to put y'all on a shelf somewhere and then think I got it going on and get mm-hmm. us another words without knowledge. Mm-hmm. You understand? Right. Put them in a the corner someday. You understand me? Mm-hmm. Read. And he said, yeah, oh, yeah. Yeah. 13th verse, and he said, O Yahweh, send, I pray thee, by the hand of him whom thou wilt send. And the anger of Yahweh was kindled against Moses, and he said, Is not Aaron the Levite thy brother? I know Hold that up, he- hold up, hold up. You understand? I've heard this many a time. Because Yahweh get on here and get angry at one of his sons, then you turn around and act like Yahweh never got angry. You understand that one of his sons. Right. Take some of these hard headed children that you've raised yeah. all your life. Uh, you want to yeah. talk about Romans 1 19 and 20. Don't you get angry at some of your kids? Mm hmm. When they are, especially when they are disobeying y'all. Don't they just quote no scriptures to me, people? Read. And the anger of Yahweh was kindled against Moses, and he said, Is not Aaron the Levite thy brother? I know that he can speak well. And also, behold, he cometh forth to meet thee, and when he seeth thee, he will be glad in his heart. And thou shalt speak unto him and put, and put words in his mouth, and I will be thy mouth, and, and I will be with thy mouth and with his mouth. And we'll teach Ooh, you. Now they're gonna leave me. That's good. Now they're gonna leave me. To go, but get, go get Jeremiah uh, from the uh, first chapter. The one? First chapter. The one. Uh, oh no, the thing is, Jeremiah Isaiah was about, but he was gonna put in Jeremiah what he was having and say by not being a child. We're going Jeremiah right back to what spirit is too. First chapter. One and six. Not one and five. Jeremiah one and four. Then the yeah, word of Yahweh. Then the word of Yahweh came unto me, saying, Before I formed thee in the belly, I knew thee. And before thou camest forth out of the womb, I sanctified thee, and I ordained thee a prophet unto the nations. Then said I, Ah Yahweh, behold, I cannot speak, for I am a child. But Yahweh, oh, now, then, then, hold, hold up now. Isaiah is a child. He's saying that. Jeremiah. Moses, I think that this was, yeah, Jeremiah said he's a child. I can't speak. And I think Moses, how old Moses was when he was telling God we can't go in Egypt when he was 80 something hey. years old? 80. Hey, hey. He was over. That all, hold up, that all lets you know something about spirit, people. It's not a respect. Matter of fact, give me just. Get, get me the one. Get, 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 get this one right quick from uh, Isaiah 53 and 8. And then I want you to give me John 8 and about 47. John 53 and, I mean, Isaiah 53 and 8. From prison yes. and from judgment was he taken away. But in his generation, who could tell that he was cut off out of the land of the living for the transgression That's- of our people? That's talking about the Messiah. That's prophesying. Who could tell you that he was cut out from the land of the living? Because they don't have no understanding of spirit. If they don't have no understanding of spirit this day. I'm going to give you an example of this. Looking at Jeremiah as being a kid. Looking at Moses. Then you're talking about spirit. Give me John 8, 47. Give you an example of this. John 8 and 47. 8 and 47. He that is of Yahweh heareth the words of Yahweh. Ye hear them not because ye are not of Yahweh. Then answered the Jews and said unto him, Say we not well that thou art a Samaritan and hast a demon? Yahshua answering, Answered, I have not a demon, but I honor my father, and you do dishonor me. And I seek not mine own glory. There is one that seeketh, and there is one that seeth and judgeth. 
Verily, verily, I say unto you, if a man keep my saying, he shall never see death. Then said the Jews unto him, now we know that thou hast a demon. Abraham is dead and the prophets. And thou said, if a man keep my saying, he shall never taste of death. Art thou greater than our father Abraham, which is dead, and the prophets are dead? Whom makest thou thyself? Yahshua answering, if I honor myself, my honor is nothing. It is my father that honoreth me, of whom ye say that he is your Elohim. Yet ye have not known him, but I know him. And if I were to say I know him not, I would be a liar like unto you. But I know him and keep his saying. Your father Abraham prayed to see my day, and he saw I want it. You to slow it down. I want you to slow it down. So Abraham prayed to see his day, and he saw it. So we need to go back and preach that more and more often. Mm -hmm. Read. Your father Abraham prayed to see my day, and he saw it and was glad. Then said the Jews unto him, Thou art not yet 50 years old, and hast thou Hold seen? Hold up. Hold up. Looking right. at a body. Right. Exactly. Looking at the flesh. Mm -hmm. Going on this day. Mm -hmm. You know, try to tell you what spirit is in every claim. Right. Read. Then said the Jews unto him, Art thou, thou art not yet fifty years old, and hast thou seen Abraham? Yahshua said unto them, Verily, verily, I say unto you, Look, be slow it down, my so they can hear it. Okay. Read. Okay. Okay. Fifty eight verse. Yahshua said unto them, Verily, verily, I say unto you, before Abraham was, I am. That veil of the flesh had them blinded to that fact. That's right. That's what the whole preaching of the gospel is, to take you beyond the veil of your carnal mind so you can see spiritual things. Read. Then took up... That's where we go back to the... That's where we go back to the law and the prophet. Mm -hmm. I'm going to go back here to Jeremiah, and hopefully you will accept it this time. We finished that up, man. 49. Then took they up stones to cast at him, but Yahshua hid himself and went out of the temple, going through the midst of them, and so passed by. If there was a he wasn't saved, you understand? I hear stones being thrown all the time. But we're mm -hmm. not, you understand, ignorant of Satan's devices. Right. Going back there to Jeremiah. And he simply told him the truth, was telling him who he was. You understand? Here, read. Jeremiah 1 and 7. But Yahweh said unto me, Say not, I am a child, for thou shalt go to all that I shall send thee, and whatsoever I command thee, thou shalt speak. Be not afraid of their faces. For I am with thee to deliver thee, saith Yahweh. Hold up, did he not tell Moses the same thing? Mm -hmm. And he also, I can go pick up scripture where he told Moses, look, I might come to somebody in a dream, but with Moses, I speak mouth to mouth. I think it's over there in Numbers somewhere. But read on, Vanessa. Be not afraid of their faces, for I am with thee to deliver thee. Says Yahweh, then Yahweh put forth his hand and touched my mouth. And Yahweh said unto me, Behold, I have put my words in thy mouth. See, I have this day set thee over the nations and over the kingdoms to root out and to pull down and to destroy. Hold up. To root out, to pull down, and to destroy. We just think the Holy Spirit, when we're telling somebody something they want 
to hear, then we want to turn around and call that the Holy Spirit. Because you're telling somebody something they want to hear. To root out, to pull down, to destroy. That's what needs to be done to all our carnal minds. Read. Moreover, the word of Yahweh came unto me, saying, Jeremiah, what seest thou? And I said, I see a rod of an almond tree. Then said Yahweh, yeah, give, me, uh, give me one more to cut this up because I got to go this fast. <laughs> give me, let me put this out here and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to yield my time. Uh, give me uh, this is something Yahweh brought to my attention. Uh, I think it's uh, Exodus the 17th chapter. Well, it was it, it, what, what led me to this, and I wasn't even looking for this, but it didn't mean mentioned in previous classes about fighting for the brethren. And y'all would just lead me to this here. And, uh, we did an exodus, brother. You want 17 and 1? Yeah, I guess so. And all the congregation of the children of Israel journeyed from the wilderness of sin after their journeys according to the commandment of Yahweh and pitched at Rephamdim, and there was no water for the people to drink. Wherefore the people did contend with Moses and said, Give us water that we may drink. And Moses said unto them, Why contend with me? Wherefore do you tempt Yahweh? And the people thirsted there for water, and the people murmured against Moses and said, Wherefore is this that thou hast brought us up out of Egypt to kill us and our children and our cattle with thirst? And Moses cried unto Yahweh, saying, What shall I do with this people? They be almost ready to stone me. And Yahweh said unto Moses, Go on before the people and take with thee of the elders of Israel and thy rod, wherewith thou smotest the river, take in thine hand and go. Behold, I will stand before thee there upon the rock of Horeb, and thou shalt smite the rock, and there shall come, and there shall come water out of it that the people may drink and Moses did so in the sight of the elders of Israel and he called the name of the place Masha and Meribah because of the contending of the children of Israel and because they tempted Yahweh saying is Yahweh among us or not then came Amalek and fought with Israel at Riftim. And Moses this said, Just the point I was out here, but read on. And Moses said unto Joshua, Choose us out, men, and go out, fight with Amalek. Tomorrow I will stand on the top of the hill with the rod of Elohim in my hand. So Joshua He's did. stand on top of the hill. With the rod of Elohim, when we read back there in Exodus, it said, what Yahweh told Moses to do with the rod. But now Moses got to hold his rod up. Mm -hmm. Read, read. So, jo so Joshua did as Moses had said to him and fought with Amalek. And Moses, Aaron, and Hur went up to the top of the hill. And it came to pass when Moses held up his hand that Israel prevailed. The and when he, Moses was holding up that hand with the rod. It was, right. Israel was winning their battles. Really. That's right. And when he let down his hand, Amalek prevailed. When he let down his hand, that rod, then Amalek prevailed. Okay. When you hold this truth down and cast it down, people, your enemy will destroy you. That's right. You get lashed in this thing. 
your enemies through subtlety will come and devour you. So mm-hmm. when to that over there in Peter, and you better read it because you, you understand. You know that somebody get Peter right quick, a roaring lion who seeketh who he may divide. That's real. As a matter of fact, since I'm gonna get that one, I'm gonna necessitate uh, that necessitates me to get over there. Somebody get a season where they put on the whole armor of Elohim. There's a reason you got to have your your armor on. Get Peter uh, right quick. First Peter five and eight. First Peter Actually, five. Pick it up at, Actually, pick it up at the first verse. Okay. First Peter, first chapter. I mean, fifth, five and one. First Peter, five and one. The elders which are among you, I exhort, who am also an oh. elder. <laughs> he just, he just, I was just, you know, once again, put it in me. To put this out here. You understand? Now, all of you who say you are elders, who say you are in the rest, I'm going I'm to tell you like Peter told. Read. The elders which are among you, I exhort, who am also an elder and a witness of the sufferings of the Messiah, and also a partaker of the glory that shall be revealed. Feed the flock of Yahweh, which is among hold, you. Hold, hold up. That's, that's Feed right. the flock of Yahweh, you <laughs> elders. You understand? Mm. Feed the flock. But now we don't want to go out there and feed every time Dick and Harry out there in the world. You understand? In our vanity, you understand? They think we are doing something. Mm-hmm. Read. Feed the flock of Yahweh, which is among you, taking the oversight thereof, not by constraint, but willingly. Hold up. Not by constraint, willingly. But willingly. Willingly. Right. You understand? Ain't nobody got to force me to have a testimony about Yahweh, my yellow Okay. Ain't nobody got to bribe me to say smooth words, you understand? I fear Yahweh. Mm-hmm. Read. Not for filthy lucre, but of a ready mind. Now, this is something y'all had to get straight with me. You understand? I ain't out there preaching to no woman because I want to, you understand, have some sexual relationship with her. I want her to please me. You understand? You understand? You can do that on your own. You understand? Still, a, you understand? Blaspheming against the name of Yahweh. That's right. You want to be with somebody, you understand? Get on. You, know, you preaching to them. Be real, people. Mm-hmm. I'm warning you because Yahweh warned me. I know what I'm talking about. Okay. Yahweh is my reward. Mm-hmm. Not somebody, you know what I'm saying, pleasing me sexually. Read. Right. Third verse. Neither as being rulers over them, but being examples to the flock. Hold up. Being examples. Now, you ain't okay. example to nobody. You understand? Often up lies. Every time you open your mouth about something. Mm-hmm. All right, now. Read. Fourth verse. And when the chief shepherd shall appear, ye shall receive a crown of glory that fadeth not away. Likewise, ye younger, submit yourselves unto the elder. Yea, all of you be subject one to another and be clothed with humility for Yahweh mm. seek, for Yahweh resisteth the proud and giveth grace to the humble. Um, humble yourselves therefore under the mighty hand of Yahweh that he may exalt you in due time casting exalt, all your hold up. exalt okay. in due time mm-hmm. we, 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 we'll be quick to exalt ourselves 
especially mm-hmm. those other eyes. You understand? Mm-hmm. Especially to those you understand that that is not not of Yahweh. Right. Read. Casting all your care upon him, for he careth for you. Be sober. Be vigilant. Because oh, the a reason. It's the reason to be sober is be vigilant. Yes. There's a reason for it. You understand? And you had it play out over there in physical Israel. Mm-hmm. Read. Be sober, be vigilant. Because the adversary, your enemy, as a roaring lion, walketh about, seeking whom he may devour. So that's all he got to do, people. Mm-hmm. To deceive the people. That's his job. He's doing a very good job at it. Oh, yeah. He don't take no breaks. He ain't resting. He's always looking at whom he can devour. Now, you want me to get you a witness for that? Go over to Isaiah. Get me. There's no fatigue to him that troubles the person. I don't know if you heard me earlier or not, Alpha, but I had said you had five minutes a while ago. <laughs> Give me over in Isaiah. Um, no fatigue to him that suffers. First, give me, uh, since I'm the time, give me somebody read uh, what I said in Ephesians about the tie into a roaring lion. Uh, and that's why you put on your whole armor. Read that in Ephesians. Well, no, no, don't don't get that. Go back. Don't get that. I'm 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 I'm, I'm gonna cut. Go and finish that back there in uh, Exodus where you read with Amalek, and I'm gonna I'm gonna cut it off. Exodus seventeen. Yeah. I'm gonna put Exodus seventeen in. Mm-hmm. Ten, ten, I think. So Joshua did as Moses had said to him and fought with Amalek. And Moses, Aaron, and Hur went up to the top of the hill. And it came to pass when Moses held up his hand that Israel prevailed. And when he let down his hand, Amalek prevailed. But Moses' hands were heavy. And they took a stone and put it under him. And he sat there on. And this is what Yahweh was showing me about this. I'm talking about fighting for the brethren. Fighting for the brethren. And there again, anybody in all Yahweh's son to have you to preach this truth. There have been periods of time where our hearts have gotten heavy because the more you preach to some of us, and then we still want to go out there and be lying and doing all this amount of evil, and our hearts do get heavy. But then when we yeah. try to tell you about it, then you turn around saying it ought not to be seen. Mm-hmm. Moses, but but there again, Yahweh knowing this, he had two there, the law and the prophets, you understand? That's, a, that's, that's how right. you fight this battle. That's right, that's right. Read it. And Aaron and her stayed stayed under his hands. And the one on one side and the other on the other side. And his hands were steady until the going down of the sun. Now his hands were steady. Indeed. You understand? Read. And Joshua discomfited Amalek and his people with the edge of the sword. And Yahweh said unto Moses, write this for a memorial in a book. And rehearse it in the ears of Yahshua. For I will utterly put out, for I will utterly put out the remembrance of Amalek from under heaven. Hold up, you better hold up, you better pay attention to this. <laughs> you understand? Looking at these bodies when Yahweh is main destruction, and then you out there crying and pleading. You understand? And talking about Yahweh shouldn't be destroyed. I don't care if it's a city, 
a nation, mm-hmm. a one man. Mm-hmm. A one man. This is okay. Yahweh creation. You understand me? That's mm-hmm. right. Mm-hmm. You tell the people the truth about the matter. I'm mm-hmm. not trying to be stupidly correct. I was going to mm-hmm. say politically correct, but they're stupidly want to be correct. Because they don't know nothing about the pattern and purpose and plan of Yahweh. Exactly. You understand? Flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of Yahweh. Right. You're looking at it as Palestinians and black people and white people and all this kind of stuff being destroyed. Yahweh ain't losing nothing. Right. It's where your mind at is in the you know, understanding this thing. Right. I'm just having mm-hmm. Yahweh have elevated mind. Finish that up so I can be through. For I'm I will utterly <laughs> you just cut it out. For I will utterly right. put out the remembrance of Amalek from under heaven. And most now you can believe that. Hold up, you can believe that or not. He said he was going to utterly put out the remembrance of Amalek where under heaven. From under heaven. That's what is going on in this creation, people. Y'all is carrying out his counsel by whom he has chosen. It's right. all through the law and the prophets. You mm-hmm. understand? And we believe what we say we're supposed to be preaching. Read. And Moses built an altar and called the name of it Yahweh Nessa. Yahweh our banner. For he said, because Yahweh hath sworn on his throne that Yahweh will have war with Amalek from generation to generation. Hold up from generation to generation. <laughs> right. You understand? From destination to destination. A lot of that stuff that's going over on there is because Yahweh had desolated before. You got right. to repeat. Then you out there running off in the mouth and don't know what's going on. You understand? Trying to fix it up for somebody. Right. Give me a season. I'm gonna, I'm gonna be too. You know, I, I'm gonna finish this. Get, get Ephesians. I put on the whole armor of Yahweh. Uh-huh. Ephesians six eleven. Appreciate you. Right. Ephesians six and eleven. Um. Finally, my brethren. Be strong in my, Yahweh. Ooh, that's, 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 that's what I'm going to say. Finally, my brother. So I knew who I'm talking to. Yeah, well, Finally, my brother. Read. Be strong in Yahweh and in the power of his might. Hold up. Now, if anybody want to question my intentions, here it is. Finally, my brother. Be strong in Yahweh. Read. And in the power of his might. In the power of his might, not in lip, not in lip service. Right. Read. Put on the whole armor of Elohim, that ye may be able to stand the wiles of the adversary. Hold up, now he won't tell you to put it on that you may be able to withstand the wiles of the adversary, because the adversary wasn't going to be trying to come at you with his wiles, right? With his deception, mm-hmm. you understand, mm-hmm. with his subtlety. Read. And I oh, think Paul rep- is writing this letter after Pentecost, after the death, burial, and resurrection of the Messiah. Yeah. Yes. I think he's writing this letter in a spiritual age. Right. Read. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood. We wrestle but against- not against flesh and blood. Anybody want to question my motive or who I'm talking to? I'm not talking to a physical flesh and blood. Right. Yahweh's children are spiritual. Mm-hmm. And so is that adversary. He's a spiritual being. Right. Read. But against principalities, against powers, against the world rulers of this darkness, Against spiritual the world rules of what? This world. World rules of this darkness. That's why yeah. it's out there. Of this darkness, right. 
Read. Against spiritual wickedness in high places. Wherefore, take unto you the whole armor of Elohim, that ye may the be whole, able to... The whole armor. Yes. Mm-hmm. Why? That ye may be able to withstand in the evil day and having overcome to stand. Stand therefore, having your loins girt about with the truth and having on the breast. your loins girt about with truth, not with lying the and deceiving, right. pretending, feigning. You understand? What you dressed up in? What you wear daily? Talking about the ever presence of Yahweh. Read. And having on the breastplate of righteousness and your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace. Above all, taking the shield of faith wherewith ye shall be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked. And take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the spirit, which is the word of Yahweh. All of the sword of the spirit, which is the word of Yahweh. The Yahweh, they never told us not to use the truth. Right. Right. Under all circumstances and occasions, Mm -hmm. when they lay my weapon down. Mm -mm, No. No. And I remember Yahweh preached to us, man, many, many, many years ago. He told Israel when they went out to, you understand, to do their business in the woods, to take their weapons with them. Yep. <laughs> right. Yep, don't leave them. Read. Praying always with all prayer and supplication in the spirit and watching thereunto with all Hold Press up, bit. hold up, you elders. Hold up, you elders. Watching with all perseverance. Read. And watching thereunto with all perseverance and supplication for all sons. For who, who are all sons? I'm going to cut it off right here. I thank you, may y'all will continue to bless us all. Hallelujah. All right. Hallelujah. All right, our final speaker will be the Dean of Radiant Soul, Dr. Carl Boston. You got to unmute yourself. You were, um, you keep muting and unmuting. Just smash it one time. You were unmuted a minute ago. Go ahead and match the button one more time. Microphone button. Can you hear me? We can hear you now. Good. I am happy and glad to Give a testimony of Yahweh, I Elohim. And I want to try to draw your attention to the purpose. Knowing how many times death is mentioned in the Bible is not going to give you eternal life. Knowing how many stones within Solomon's temple is not going to give you eternal life. You have to believe and know that Yahweh, our Elohim, is the true Elohim, and he's also the Savior. Now, when he manifests in the form of Yahshua, that's because Yahweh in his pure spirit state cannot be seen. So he has to come down into a visible state of existence because that's where we are. 
to teach us about himself and to reconcile us back to himself through the truth, which is Yahshua. Now, this was formulated and put together before Yahweh stepped into shape and form. Elohim, I know we're going to have trouble with this, but I don't mind taking the heat. Elohim is the mind of Yahweh because there's a beginning and there is an end. See? Now, when you're talking about Yahweh, folk got that wrong. They jump on it and uh, misconstrue. Yahweh is not a mind. And nobody said he was. He's not a mind, but he took on a mind. Why? If he had not taken on one, there would be no end. To love. There will be no end to knowledge. So he had to harness these things and to bring it down into shape and form according to a purpose in order to reconcile us back unto himself. Yahweh said, as I have thought, so shall it be. See, let's go to uh, the scripture lesson. Start about the sixth verse and come down. First Corinthians two and six. How be it, we speak wisdom among them that are perfect, yet not the wisdom of this age nor of the rulers of this age that come to naught. But we speak the wisdom of Yahweh hidden in a mystery, which Yahweh hath ordained before the ages unto our glory. That's it. We speak the wisdom of Yahweh hid in a mystery that hath to be revealed by the Holy Spirit. For the Holy Spirit is the truth of Yahweh in shape and form. You understand? That's what the Holy Spirit is. It's the truth of Yahweh in shape and in form, or in other words, in a state and condition where it can be understood and perceived. That's what it is. And that's how Yahweh come to us. Now, what did he come to us for? To reconcile us. When I say us, I'm not talking about everybody. I'm talking about the sons of Yahweh, which he loved, which he wanted. See? And that's what he gave unto his wisdom, which is his wife. That's our mother. See, Yahweh impregnated his wisdom, his knowledge, his understanding to bring forth according to his will. See, his children, I said, now he said himself that the children of the flesh, they are not his. They don't belong to him, even though he created them. They are not counted as his children. Now, we have to be prepared to enter back into the spirit. And by that, I mean, we have to come to understand that the physical body that we have on, see, have to be gotten rid of in our mind. We cannot carry this around in our mind and thinking that that's what we are. 
because the physical body, as was mentioned earlier, flesh and blood, it cannot inherit the kingdom of Yahweh. Now, what is the kingdom, see, of Yahweh? It's not eating and drinking, but righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Spirit. Now, those things that blinds us is the knowledge of the flesh. That's the adversary. That's what we must overcome are the fleshly things that we learn and assume in our mind. That's where the translation is. It's in our mind. See? Now you go to, what is it, 1 Corinthians 3.16. Let's read that right quick. We'll come back. 1 Corinthians 3.16. Know ye not that ye are the temple of Yahweh and that the spirit of Yahweh dwelleth in you? Now if you don't believe that, if that's not a reality with you, then you have no chance of entering into it. It's a spiritual and psychological translation. See? Not only is Yahweh in you, but that's what you are. And the thing that keeps you from understanding and accepting that is called the adversary. By feeding you with the thoughts of this world and the dangers and flashing all kind of things in front of you that you are familiar with in the flesh and have experienced and that you like. So he continued to flash those things just like he did with the Messiah. I give all this to you if you just bow down to me. See, Satan wants the glory. He wants Yahweh's glory. See? And we cannot give in to that. See? Yahweh will make it to where you just loathe the flesh. That you no longer want to be a part of it. You want to get rid of it. So he began to formulate in your mind the things of the flesh that are vile. Things that you used to think was good, cute, things that you used to think was good, things that you used to like become vile to you. So what you're doing when that happens, you're beginning to clean up and taking those things off because you don't want to do that anymore. You don't want to be that anymore. Why? You're cleaning up now. You're getting ready to go home. So you can't forget about what the purpose is. How many times death is written in the Bible? Who cares? Ain't no eternal life in that. See? So it must become a reality. If it's not real to you, then you have no chance of entering into it. You're on the outside looking and still don't see and understand what you're looking at. Finish that in Corinthians and then go to the first chapter of Ephesians. 3.16 Know ye not that ye are the temple of Yahweh and that the spirit of Yahweh dwelleth First Corinthians. Scripture lesson. Okay. Well, we speak seventh verse. But we speak the wisdom of Yahweh hidden in a mystery, which Yahweh hath ordained before the ages unto our glory. Which Yahweh ordained these things before the world was unto our glory. We are the only one that's going to receive this. Everybody is not going to buy it. And you got to be strong enough to stand up, up for the truth. Irregardless of what they're saying, like Paul, he told Jeremiah, 
Don't be afraid of their faces. They can frown and get all puffed up and blowed up. It don't make a difference. You ain't going to change what, what the truth. See? Read on. Which none of the rulers of this age knew. For none of them knew it. it. None knew. From Adam all the way down, none of them knew. They didn't even know the name of Yahweh. Mm -hmm. See, this invisible creator who created all things had to introduce himself to his creatures so they can begin to know him, see, as the creator. And that he do have a name and a purpose and a plan. See, which was first brought to mind through Moses or Moshi. Moses or Moshi means drawn out. Yahweh drew him out, you understand, to operate that part of his purpose. See, from the time that he was born to the time that he was reared up in Pharaoh's house, the one that sent out the death decree. This is the power of Yahweh. See, he can do whatever he wants. And that's another thing. Aya, Asher, Aya. They still, to this day, don't think that Yahweh can be whatever he will to be. You understand? Look around in the world. Where do you think these things come from? They didn't create themselves. See? They had to have a beginning or somewhere to come from. And the only source and only substance is Yahweh himself. So don't tell me that Yahweh cannot be you in an unconscious state. And he must bring you back to consciousness of who you are and where you come from if you expect to enter back into him in righteousness, peace, joy, and happiness. You understand? Ain't no thoughts going on back there. For it's over. It ended when it took on the form of Elohim. It also began when he took on the form of Elohim. Elohim is the beginning and the end of it. See? Read on so I can go on and get through with this. For had they known it, they would not have crucified the king of glory. But as it is written, I have not seen nor ear heard, neither have entered into the heart of man the things which Elohim has prepared for them that love him. Have an end into the heart of man. See, we are entering back into love. Yahweh is love, and it has no end. See? It has no end. How deep is the love of Yahweh? You understand? Fifth chapter. You understand? What manner of love is this that we should be called the sons of Yahweh? You understand? We are his children. He wanted children, many of them. See? To give an inheritance to. I said wisdom is our mother. Now you go to the 8th chapter of Proverbs. Wisdom and knowledge is called her. That's the feminine part of Yahweh. That's the substance of Yahweh. And he impregnated his substance with his will by getting in it and becoming everything that exists. And it didn't take nothing from him. 
and did add nothing to him. See, you have to understand what this is about. This is about going home. See, and also uh, get the first chapter of Ephesians, but finish this up right quick. But Yahweh hath revealed them unto us by his spirit. Who revealed it? Yahweh. Yahweh has revealed these things to us by his knowledge, by his wisdom, by his understanding, which is passed on to us by and through the Messiah, that we might be filled with all the fullness of Yahweh. You understand? And when we are filled with all the fullness of Yahweh, there is no more you. You seek to exist as men and women. Ain't no more you. See? Every jot, every tittle has to be fulfilled. It should not in no wise pass from the law till all be fulfilled. You cannot and will not pass from the physical until you have been fulfilled, until the flesh is finished. See? That's right. Until the transformation is complete. You are not going anywhere as a man or a woman. You must be translated back to where you come from. He read. For the spirit searches all things. It searches all things. You always want to get into the deep things of Yahweh. Well, that's what the hell they were set up for. I don't don't want to know how many bricks in Solomon's temple. Hell, that ain't helping me. See? You use these things, these types and shadows, and you correlate them to the pattern. That all things was created by to point to the spirit of Yahweh. But you have to have the revelation of what this is about and why these things exist. See? Not the things itself, but what they represent and what they point to. That's what you must understand. They read. Yea, the deep things of Yahweh. For what man knoweth the things of a man, save the spirit of man which is in him? Even so, the things of Elohim knoweth no man, but the spirit of Elohim. No man knoweth the spirit of Elohim. You understand? Only the spirit of Elohim know who and what his purpose is all about or who he is. You understand? You cannot be sitting up in heaven, you understand, and not know that you are Yahweh, because that's the only thing that exists, and that's the only thing that will exist. How are you going to be sitting up there and you don't know who you are? That's stupid and ignorant. See, I don't care about them getting mad at me. Ain't nothing they can do with it. And I'm not afraid. You understand? I got my armor on, and I got my sword ready. See, got my helmet on, my breastplate at all time. It may look like I'm weak, see, but you may make a mistake when you think that, because all hell will break loose on you. I don't have to fight. But I will if Yahweh give me permission. But he do all the fighting for me and have done it. Read. Now we have received not the spirit of the world, but the spirit which is of Elohim. See, we have not received the spirit of the world, the knowledge of this world. It can't take you nowhere. You can take the, the, you understand, every book that's been created and read it and study it and learn it and know it from front to back. It cannot take you no further than the world that 
you walk around in and the thoughts of the men who wrote the book. It cannot penetrate beyond the flesh. Yeah, it cannot take you into the spirit of it. See? You must understand the translation that you have to go through. You can no longer be you and think that you're going to heaven. Some of them still think heaven is up in the sky. They're going to fly off. And some of them still separate the Godhead. They think that Yahshua is something different than Yahweh. When it's the same one. Yahshua Yahweh, Yahshua Elohim. What the hell are you talking about? You don't understand. You're afraid. So you, 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 you call on all three of them, what you look at me as three of them, just in case. Right. You understand? Right. Now you got to know who you're talking about and who you're talking to. I said it's Yahweh is the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. This right. is about Yahweh. This is about glorifying him. That's right. See? Not for you to glorify yourself and have folks, you understand, looking at you and praising you. Mm -hmm. It's not about that. You ain't getting none of Yahweh's glory. See, and anybody who know anything know that whatever you be looking at that's true, and whatever you speak that's true, that is, didn't come from you, you didn't come up with it. Only Yahweh is the revealer of secrets. Not a man. Finish that. That we might know the things that are freely given to us of Yahweh. Which that are freely are given to us of Yahweh. I said freely. Mm -hmm. Given to us. Okay. You can't read up on it. You can't think up on it. It has to be given to you. Every revelation that I have, Yahweh gave it to me. That's right. I wasn't smart enough to dig in that book and find these things out. See? It was given to me. A gift of the Holy Spirit. A present. You understand? That's the only way you're going to get it. You have to give it to you. Read. Which things also we speak, not in the words which man's wisdom teacheth, but which the Holy Spirit teacheth, revealing spiritual things to spiritual persons. To spiritual persons. See, this this can't be revealed to the flesh of the man. Because his foolishness of him, you, you try to tell me I'm Yahweh, you... I ain't Yahweh. That's foolishness to him to tell him that. See? So we have to be given to spiritual persons. You see? Which was spiritual before they come into this world. Before you was formed in your mother's belly, I knew you. And ordain you to be a son that's right. of the most high El. That's the only way that's happening. Read. But the natural man receiveth not the things of the spirit of Yahweh, for they are foolishness unto him. They are foolishness unto him. You trying to tell me God don't live in the sky? Yes, I am. You try to tell me that water baptism is wrong? Yes, I am. You try to tell me that Jesus Christ don't exist? Yes, I am. See? And I can prove it. How do you think we get to prove these things? Where do you think the knowledge that we have received, where do you think it come from? Hmm. I didn't know nothing about Baal means Lord. 
I didn't know nothing about God come from G-O-T-T. -T. You understand? Ain't even thought about that. Never in my mind. That was given unto me. See? And was backed up by permitting me to do some research and to study these things so I can know it for myself. And I'm thankful. And I do revile the old man. I can't stand it. I'm glad Yahweh is separating me from this physical. I have no more desire for the thing that I used to desire. Because they become vile to me. You understand? I wish I could really get in there and break this down without offending anybody. See, but they're so weak minded. See, if you were to say the word shit, goddamn, ooh, he's cussing like you ain't never said that. You understand, you hypocrite? As soon as you get off this call, you call somebody an evil bastard or you cursing or using the profanity. Then when it's said on this flow or from this a microphone here, you act like you never heard that before. Read on. But the natural man receiveth not the things of the spirit of Yahweh, for they are foolishness unto him. Neither can he know them, because they are spiritually discerned. They are spiritually discerned. Spiritually discerned. See? You cannot use natural physical things and think that's where Yahweh abides. Uh, that's his purpose and plan. See? Yahweh is not a man. He's not physical. See? He is spirit. That's what Yahweh is, and we tried our best over the years to teach you of what spirit really is mm -hmm. so that you can see. You can't touch it. You can't taste it. You can't handle it. You can't see it. See? It has to be manifested in a form that you can see. That you can touch. That you can taste of the spirit. See? When Moses then was looking at Elohim transforming their mouth, did not it say that they ate and drank? Well, it wasn't physical and natural. They were eating and drinking of what they saw. See? Got to get the thing straight. And don't forget the purpose. Let's go and hit that right quick. Uh, finish that so we can hit that purpose right quick. But he that is spiritual judgeth all things, yet he himself is judged of no man. Can't judge me. You don't know who I am. For who hath known? I was talking not... to my daughter the other day. She was talking about that when she was working, all these folks used to come in that was sick. They had told the man that he was going to die. And he was crying. You understand? And she was crying with him. And she told him, don't you worry, you're not going to die. And she would go to that house and work with him. See? And the lady was told, was told she would never walk again. And she told the lady that, yes, she would walk again. And went over to her house on a weekend and worked with that woman. And that woman came back to the office there, you understand, with a walker. And took that walker and slung it over to the side and started walking. The man did not die. See, that was the only Elohim that they would ever see was in that body speaking to them. You understand? And everything that she said would happen, happened. See, so this gospel is real. Yahweh is real. Can't put no limits on him. See, 
Finish that up. For who has known the mind of Yahweh? Who have he... known the mind? It didn't say Yahweh was the mind, but he created him one. Why? Because it's impossible for him to put something together like this if he didn't have a beginning and an end to it. See? He wouldn't be able to corral it or to put it in any kind of form if he just let it run. Wisdom has no end. He had to put a stop to it somewhere and formulate it into a purpose and a plan. The I am the beginning and I am the end. That's the mind of Yahweh. And I do know what I'm talking about. These things were revealed to me, and I appreciate and thank Yahweh for it. Ephesians first chapter, and let's get on down. We'll start the first verse. Ephesians 1 and 1. Saul, an apostle of Yahshua, the Messiah, by the will of Yahweh, to the sons which are at Ephesus, and to the faithful in the Messiah, Yahshua, grace be to you and peace from Yahweh our Father and from the Savior, Yahshua the Messiah. Blessed be Yahweh, the Father of our Savior, Yahshua the Messiah, who hath blessed us with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places in the Messiah, according as he hath chosen us in him before the according foundation. According as he has chosen us us in the Messiah. Mm -hmm. That means you have to be translated into the Messiah. Mm -hmm. You are Yahshua when you're translated into him. Ain't no you in Yahshua. Ain't but one. Mm -hmm. Right. Okay. Read on. According as he hath chosen us in him before the foundation of the world. Before the foundation of the world. We were chosen in him. You see. Read on. That we should be holy and without blame before him in love having predestinated us unto the adoption of children. And you still, got, you still got people in this school that call themselves teachers that says there's no such thing as predestination. Hmm. I don't care about them getting mad at me. I call them out. See? You get mad if you want to. What you going to do? Mm -hmm. See, read. Having predestinated us unto the adoption of children by Yahshua the Messiah to himself, according to the good pleasure of his will, to the praise of the glory of his grace, wherein he hath made us accepted in the beloved. That's right. Mm -hmm. He has made us accepted. Mm -hmm. In the beloved. Right. See? You didn't just jump in there, all of a sudden you know something. No. Stop thinking you know. See? Stop that. And thank Yahweh for knowing in you mm -hmm. the things that you have received, which is eternal life. Being Yahweh, and you listen now, being Yahweh is eternal life. Who and what is Yahshua? Yahweh. Yahshua is Yahweh the Savior. 
See? And knowing that is eternal mm -hmm. life. Mm -hmm. There's no end to him. See? There's no beginning to him. Read on. Seventh verse. In whom we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of sins according to the riches of his grace. That's right. <laughs> the forgiveness of sin. Mm -hmm. Look, let me tell you this. If you've been sinning, it's because Yahweh made you that way. <laughs> you understand? You can't do nothing that Yahweh had purpose for you to do. Eve didn't have a choice of partaking of that fruit. She didn't have no choice about that. Yahweh created her for that purpose. Same thing with Satan. Satan didn't have no choice. Where are you going to get a choice from? He's not the creator. I'm talking about learning and knowing what the truth is. Not your imagination or your opinion. You understand? Now, how many times water baptism is mentioned in the Bible? What the hell does that mean? You can count to a hundred of it mentioned. That's no salvation in that. Mm. See? I'm not criticizing. I'm not trying to hurt anybody. I'm just telling you the truth about it. So that if that's the path that you are on, then you can get off that path and get on the right path. Mm -hmm. See? Right. And start doing and saying that thing that are frightened. I'm not afraid to tell the truth. And there are many things that I haven't said that I know will raise pure hell in opposition to it because it's so opposite of the thing that you have been taught. You would think that I've lost my mind. <laughs> See? That's why I don't mention those things at this point. But there will be a coming time that they will be brought out. And Absolutely. Paul brought it out in some ways in Second Corinthians, the third chapter. He brought it out. And they ain't understood it. As Peter said, Paul wrote something that's hard to be understood. That men wrestle to their own destruction. But I ain't gonna hit that right now. Finish that. Wherein he hath abounded toward us in our wisdom and prudence, having made known unto us the mystery of his will. He has to made known to us right. the mystery of his will. Right. Read. According to his good pleasure, which he, which he hath purposed in himself. Now he purposed to give this to his children. Now he allowed his children to play with that adversary and his and his children. He allowed us to go and experience this physical life, mm -hmm. but he kept an eye on us at all times. Thank goodness. He kept his hand on us at all times. He would mm -hmm. not allow us to go too far away. Mm -hmm. You understand? Like a mm -hmm. good father would. And he loved us. See, and Yahweh have many children. Mm -hmm. And when you're going through the story of him with Abraham, said, in Isaac shall thy seed be called, which is talking about Yahshua the Messiah. Right. In the truth, his seed shall be called. The devil and his offsprings are not going to believe Yahweh. And I want you to understand this. When Yahweh cast those satanic angels out of heaven and they hit the earth plane, they have no idea of where they come from. 
They are lost. Look at them on the, at the whaling wall, bumping their head up against them, bowing and, and grabbing a hold to the scepter and thinking that's going to do something for them. They are lost. Some of them don't even know where and how. But Satan do. And he know he have a short time, so he's busy. Right. He reads. Right. Read that on. In the 10th verse, that in the dispensation of the fullness of times, he might gather together in one all things in the Messiah. Now we're talking about the purpose. Right. That in the dispensation of the fullness of time, and I was corrected on that. I said Yahshua was the end of time. But my younger daughter uh, 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 brought this to my attention that the founder had in his transcript, and I remember sitting in class when he preached it. See? That this age, because there had to be an elevation of time with the Messiah, Adam was the degenerator, Yahshua had to be the regenerator, that time ended in 1950, I believe, 1960 or something like that. 60. See? Time actually ended in 1960. See? We are in a probationary period now. Right. To get ourselves cleaned up and be ready to go home. This is our probationary period. So time did end with the Messiah, and it began with Adam. So time is over. They ain't got no time now. You on borrowed time if you just want to use some words, see? Read. That in the dispensation of the fullness of time, he might gather together in one all things in the Messiah, both which are in heaven and which are on earth, even in him. So he's going to gather together all things in the Messiah, which are in heaven. Now, the only thing that's in heaven are those righteous angels that kept their estate. Right. And on earth. And the one he's talking about on earth is family on earth are those. See? That was of the faith of Abraham. Abraham believed Yahweh. That was counted unto him for righteousness. So the offsprings on this earth believe Yahweh. That is their righteousness. You see? Oh, that is our righteousness. Now he's gathering all things back into one. See, when Yahweh took on form of his norm, all things was manifested in him. See? And so when he drew them out, now all things went together back unto him, but in a purified state. Get 15 chapter 1 Corinthians, start at the 25th verse. Did you finish that up? Now that's the purpose and the plan of Yahweh was to gather all things into one. Then I want you to get uh, uh, I want you to get the 12th chapter of Romans. I want to try to get this straightened out. In the second chapter of uh, Corinthians five, I believe it's five nineteen, maybe five sixteen. Start the sixteenth verse. But go to Corinthians 15, 1 and 1 and 25. First Corinthians 15, 25. We'll start at 24. 23. 23. <laughs> For as in Adam all die, even so in the Messiah shall all me be made alive. Mm -hmm. but, but every man in his own order. The Messiah, the first fruits. Afterwards, they that are the Messiahs at his coming. Then cometh the end, when he shall have delivered up the kingdom to Yahweh, even the Father, when he shall have put down all rule and all authority and power. For he must reign till he hath put all enemies under his feet. 
The last enemy that shall be destroyed is death. That's the last one. See? Now, Yahweh allowed death to reign for a period of time in this probationary period. See? But it shall be destroyed. There will be no more death. You understand? Oh, that's going to be good. Read. For he hath put all things under his feet. But when he saith, all things are put under him, it is manifest that he is excluded, which did put all things under him. And when all things shall be subdued unto him, then shall the Son also himself be subject unto him that put all things under him, that Yahweh may be all in all. That who? Yahweh. It didn't say Yahshua did it. No. Nope. This is Yahweh's purpose, not, not his son. See? Get it straight. Ain't nothing wrong with calling on Yahweh. Ain't nothing wrong with calling on Yahshua. Because that is Yahweh. Same one, right. You understand? Nothing wrong with that. Don't be afraid of it. Now, uh, let me try to get this straight out. Romans 12th chapter and uh, 2 Corinthians 5, 16. And we'll try to do it from there. Romans 12 and 1. I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of Yahweh, that ye present your bodies a living sacrifice. Hold holy. up. All right. All right. That you present your body a living sacrifice. Because everything that's been offered up to Yahweh under the Israelis and the law was dead. Dead right. animals. Right, right. Dead vegetation. See? Now he said, present yourself a living sacrifice. Now we're going to see what that means. Read. That ye present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto Yahweh, which is Holy your and acceptable unto Yahweh. Read. Which is your reasonable service. Which is your reasonable service. A dead man can't serve Yahweh. Right. See? That's right. Corner mine. Mm -hmm. That's your reasonable service. That's right. It's to serve Yahweh. And honor him. Read on. And be not conformed to this age. Don't be conformed to this age. And become a part of this. See, look, look, look at, look at Israel. They mm -hmm. were going about their business until Hamas attacked Israel with ten thousand rockets. Mm -hmm. But the world right. is against Israel hmm. for protecting herself. Make you wonder where is all this hatred coming from right. against the nation of Israel. Of Israel, right, exactly. When the Hamas, the two leaders there, stated out of their own mouth that they were rich, they're going to be okay. They are using those people as a shield mm -hmm. right. to do Iran's duty. Now, you would think that if they loved those people, Palestinians, mm -hmm. the Iranians would provide them with money to purchase brick and mortar to build schools. You understand? Businesses, if they really cared about them. Right. They don't give a damn. They're getting rich off that. Right. Just like uh, Arafat did. He had millions of dollars uh, in European banks just in case 
he had to get on the run. Where is all this hatred coming from? Right. Exactly. What is Israel supposed to do? Lay it out and let them kill them? By no means. Our friend is doing what Yahweh put in him. Right. Before Israel ceased to be a nation, Yahweh said he'll roll this thing up like a scroll. Indeed. So I ain't worried about Israel. Right. right. You understand? I ain't worried about the Palestinians, you see. It's right. too many of them anyway. <laughs> Run around begging and hungry. I don't care nothing about them demons. Mm hmm Oh, man. Finish that, baby. Okay. And be and be not conformed to this age, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind that ye may You see that? that? You... To be ye transformed by the renewing. That means to make new right. of your mind. That's right. where the translation must take place. That's who it, what you really are. You are what you are in your mind. If you think you're a man or a woman, that's what you are. See? Finish that. That ye may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of Yahweh. That's right. So you can prove what is that acceptable and perfect Will of Yahweh. Right. They ran out here trying to preach the gospel. Don't even know what the will of Yahweh is. You ask them, what's the will of Yahweh? To save mankind. That wasn't a damn will. The will was to glorify and honor himself. We're no saving no damn mankind. Right. That's the plan. You understand? And Yahweh is not saving mankind. No. You won't find that in the Bible anywhere. <laughs> See? Now, let's try to finish this up with 2 Corinthians 5.16, I believe it is. But before we go there, let's go to John 5.30. Because I want you to understand that these things that were set up in the law and in the prophecy was talking about the Messiah. Yahweh was setting up a script for the Messiah to follow or come in and finish so that he could be pointed out as the son of Yahweh. Because no man can do the thing that Yahshua did Except he be Elohim. And that's how it was pointed out. He had to come in and finish the works that Yahweh had given unto him. He was wrought, reward was with him, and his works was before him. See? Read 530. John 530. I can of mine own self do nothing. Now, you get that straight. I can't of myself. I can't do nothing. I can't heal nobody. I can't raise nobody from the dead. See? It's my father in me. He's doing all of the works. Who else going to do it? See? Read. And also get Isaiah 14.24. As I am taught of my father, I judge. That's what he do. And my judgment is just. Because I seek not mine own will, but the will of the father which hath sent me. If I bear witness of myself, ye will say, thy witness is not true. There is another that beareth witness of me. And I know that the witness which he witnesseth of me is true. He is true. And John bore witness of the Messiah. Mm -hmm. And he said, when the Messiah come out the wilderness, he said, Lo, a look, the Lamb of Yahweh to come in and take away the sin of the world. And we went on to explain, he said, I didn't know him. 
See? But the one who sent me said, he to whom the dove is sitting upon his head, or the spirit is sitting upon his head in the form of a dove, that is my son. So Yahweh pointed him out by the works that he was doing. You see, read. Ye sent unto John, and he bare witness unto the truth. But I received not testimony from me. But these things I say, that ye might be saved. He was a burning and a shining light. And ye were willing for a season to rejoice in his light. But I have greater witness than that of John. For the works which the Father hath given me to finish, the same works I do, and they That's the same it. works he would do, and the work that he did more witness that he is the Messiah. All the way from Adam all the way down, the work is more witness that he is the Messiah. Now go on over to uh Second Corinthians three sixteen. Second Corinthians five sixteen. Second Corinthians five and sixteen. Wherefore, henceforth know we no man after the flesh. We don't know no man after the flesh, see? I think that's where I won't read. Okay. Yea, though we have known the Messiah after the flesh, yet now henceforth know we him no more. Therefore, if any man be in the Messiah, he is a new creature. A brand new creature. You're not the same one. Right. Read. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. Everything has become new. Mm -hmm. I think I'm starting at the right place. Read on. I think so. Um, and all things are of Yahweh, who hath reconciled us to himself by Yahshua the Messiah and hath given to us the ministry of reconciliation. Mm -hmm. To wit, that Yahweh was in the Messiah. That ain't it. It's, it's That's not gone it. too far. Start at the uh, start at the eleven verse. Okay, Second Corinthians five and eleven. Knowing therefore the terror of Yahweh, we persuade men, but we are made manifest unto Yahweh, and I trust also are made manifest in your consciences. Into your conscience. See, read. For we commend not ourselves again unto you, but give you occasion to glory on our behalf, that ye may have somewhat to answer them, which glory in appearance and not in heart. And not in heart, read. For if we be beside ourselves, it is to Elohim. And if we be sober, it is for your cause. For the love of the Messiah constraineth us because we just, because we thus judge that if one died for all, then we're all dead. Then we're all dead. See, if one died for all, then we're all dead. Here we go, read. And that he died for all, that they which live should not henceforth live unto themselves, but unto him which died for them and rose again. That's it right there. That you should not henceforth live unto yourself. Why? Because now you are a living sacrifice. You sacrifice your life. You start doing those things that you were doing before. You understand? Now you're doing those things to please Yahweh. You're sacrificing your earthly life. That's right. That you may please him who died and raised from the dead. Mm -hmm. I hope you're understanding this. Read. Mm -hmm. Wherefore, henceforth know we no man after the flesh. Yea, though we have known the Messiah after the flesh, yet now henceforth know we him no more. Therefore, if any man be in the Messiah, he is a new creature. He's a brand new creature. You see that? If any man be where? In, in the Messiah. 
the Messiah. In the truth. In the truth. In the truth. He's a brand new creature. Don't be sitting around here waiting to die to go to heaven. Oh, right. Mm -hmm. That's what most of them are doing. Yeah. Read on. Therefore, if any man be in the Messiah, he is a new creature. All things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. And all things are of Yahweh, who hath reconciled us to himself by Yahshua the Messiah. By the truth. Right. The truth mm -hmm. will set you free from the law of sin and death. Right. See? It will set you free from that satanic spirit who got a grip on you and constantly feeding you with lies right. and making you think a thing that is not true. See? Trying to make you lose faith in Yahweh. Mm -hmm. Yahweh work a work. And he don't have no time table to do his work. You understand? Not your time table. Mm -hmm. Read. And hath given to us the ministry of reconciliation. And give to us the ministry that will reconcile one back to him. Right. Now go to the mm -hmm. uh, fourth chapter of Second Corinthians. And I think uh, I want to end up with the tenth chapter of Second Corinthians. Second uh, the Corinthians. fourth chapter and 15th verse. Okay. Uh, Second Corinthians 4 and 15. For all things are for your sakes, that the abundant grace might through the thanksgiving of many redound to the glory of Yahweh. Mm -hmm. For which cause we faint not. But though our outward men perish, Yet the inward man is renewed day by day. Day by day. That's what we're after, the inward man. Mm -hmm. See, read. For our light affliction, which is but for a moment, worketh for us a far more exceeding and eternal weight of glory. While we look not at the things which are seen, but at the things which are not seen. Now, how you but do that? <laughs> but we look not at the things that are seen, but we look at the things that are not seen. How you do that? Okay. You need to stop and start wearing these things and paying attention. How you look at things that are not seen? Mm -hmm. By the knowledge and understanding that you have received. Mm -hmm. That's how you see Yahweh. All right. As he really is, as he actually exists. Read. For the things which are seen are temporal. They are temporary. Right. All of it is temporary. Right. Even the natural thoughts are temporary. Mm hmm. Never go on in there with all that foodiness in you. Read. But the things which are not seen are eternal. Those, those things are eternal. Now get the 10th chapter of 2 Corinthians. See? And how you ward off that devil. Because he coming, he coming hard. First, first. Try to convince you that Yahweh don't care nothing about you. Left you out in the open. He ain't doing nothing for you. And he's strong enough to make you believe it. But if you have the faith of a mustard seed, mm -hmm. ain't All nothing right. that devil can say or do mm -hmm. that can change your mind about your father. That's right. You understand? Mm -hmm. Hmm. Read. First verse. First verse. Now I saw myself beseech you by the meekness and gentleness of the Messiah, who in presence am base among you, but being absent, am bold toward you. But I beseech you 
that I may not be bold when I am present with that confidence. Where yeah, I don't want to be bold when I'm present with that confidence. Why is that? Because just as Moses was, you understand, when Saul spoke, it was mouth to mouth with Yahweh. That was Yahweh speaking to him, see? And whatever he said, that's what come in the past. Because it was Yahweh that was angry. And that's he right. expressed it through the apostles. Mm -hmm. Right. See, read. Wherewith I think to be bold against some, which think of us as if we walked according to the flesh. Read. For though we walk in the flesh, we do not war after the flesh. We don't war after the flesh. Read. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through Elohim. To the pulling down of strongholds of rebels. To the pulling down of the strongholds of rebels. You understand? Hiding behind the flesh. Hiding behind beautiful thoughts and concepts that makes you feel so good. You understand? That makes you think that that's what you want. But when you examine it, Having gone through it before that process, you understand, you see just how vile and nasty that it is. And you can't believe at one time you were all off in that head first. Read. Casting down imaginations and every Casting down. Those nations of images. See, you're casting down imagination because you ain't got nothing to do. You sit around imagining instead of picking up your book and reading. Imagining all kinds of things pop up in your head. And none of it is good. See, read. Casting down imaginations and every high thing that exalted itself against the knowledge of Yahweh and bring it exalted itself against the knowledge of Yahweh. Got a boxing contest going on. Hmm. Read. And bring it into captivity every thought to the obedience of the Messiah. That's it. You have to bring into captivity every thought. You see where we are? Every thought to the obedience of the truth. The lie cannot do anything with the truth. It's not strong enough. It don't weigh enough. So when you bring it down to the obedience of the, the truth, what happened? Read. And being in readiness to revenge all disobedience, when your obedience is fulfilled. With your obedience, when you are able to obey, you have put that bastard down. He's not in your way anymore. See? You can obey the truth, and you can teach it to others, and they can see the results of it in your obedience. See? And how you walk, and how you carry yourself, and what you believe. Now I'll get one more and I'm done. That's Isaiah 14 and 24. Isaiah 14, 24. Yahweh of hosts hath sworn, saying, Surely as I have thought, so shall it come to pass. That's and the way it's going to come to pass, as I have thought. And there was no long way out there thinking. The spirit don't have to think. It will. The thinking is done. You understand? In an incorporeal state of condition of mind. You see, because it has a beginning and an end. Yahweh thoughts don't run through one end of eternity to the other. Otherwise, this universal world will never end. See? 
Read on. That's and right. As, and as I have purposed, so shall it stand. That I it's will gonna stand just the way I purpose it. You understand? I don't care what you think. It's going just like I purposed it to go. See? Read. That I will break the Assyrian in my land, and upon my mountains tread him underfoot. Then shall his mm -hmm. yoke depart from off them, and his burden depart from off their shoulders. This is the purpose that is purposed upon the whole earth. And upon the whole the earth, he shall break his hold on you. See, and you will be free to serve Yahweh. See? And that's more to it than that, but I'm going to close it up here. I always enjoy hearing and preaching this gospel. But don't get it twisted, folks. As I stated before, and I don't mean it uh, in an ugly way, but knowing how many times baptism is in the Bible, that's, that's no good to you. There's no salvation in it. See? None whatsoever. Learn what the purpose of Yahweh is. See? Take off that flesh. Take off that face mask. That's right. You understand? And be you renewed in the spirit of your mind. That's what a transformation is. The body has already been taken care of. You ain't got to worry about translating it. That's been set. All things are going back to spirit. Don't make no difference what it is. But you go back with a knowledge, with an understanding, with the love of Yahweh in your heart. So that you can be one with him throughout eternity. That's what this is about. So I thank you. May Yahweh bless you. All right. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. All right. That concludes class for today. Are there any questions or comments from anybody on Zoom or YouTube? Any questions or comments? Enjoy class today. Yes, sir. Wait on YouTube for just a second. While we're waiting to see if there are any questions from YouTube, I'll start with the announcements. They are as follows. We have class every Sunday from 10 a.m. to noon Central Time. We have in-person class from um, every other Saturday. We're supposed to have it this Saturday coming up. Um, and We may still have it, but um, I know me and my husband, we won't be present. We had something else we had to do on this Saturday, so I'll speak with the class here and see if we're going to still have it um, for this Saturday coming up. Also, our uh, website is www.soulfood.org, S-O-H-L-F-O-O-D dot O-R-G. Um, our email address is meridiansoul at gmail.com or I-D-M-R meridian M-S at gmail.com. Again, our event that we're having in June of 2024 is in Gulfport, Mississippi. The dates are June 20th through the 23rd. 2024. It is free to register. There is an international airport um, and there's some fun attractions for the kids too. If you want to register for the event, which I suggest everybody do if you plan on coming, do it as sooner than later because it is limited space. The um, space that we're renting out is not super duper big. And so we have limited space. Um, but you can go to the website, soulfood.org, click on events. And once you click on events, it has all the information about the event, it has the location, the time address it even has the hotel information there are two different hotels that we have group rates for um, and the phone numbers are on the website as well if you call either one of those hotels to reserve the group rate for the um, hotel stay make sure you mention um, the group name Meridian Soul or Soul Food um, Meridian, Pre Meridian Soul Present Soul Food Gathering all right and then you click on register to go and register for the event and then separately, you have to call the hotel to reserve your room space for the hotel. The, G, um, the airport code for the airport in Gulfport is GPT. There will be um, shuttles from to and from the airport from the, both of the hotels. So if you have reservations at either hotel, there will be a shuttle from both places. There are a lot of food places 
um, in walking distance from where we'll be at. There's also the shopping outlet that's in walking distance also from where we're at. So um, if you're not planning, you really don't really need to run a car unless you just want to go to Biloxi to the beach. It's about 15 minutes on 15 miles from 15, 20 miles from Gulf Fork. Other than that, everything we need is in walking distance from um, the event and the event center and the hotels. All right. Um, I think that's it. No questions. Okay. All right. Well, we will conclude with the doxology taken from the last two verses of the book of Jude. Now unto him that is able to keep you from falling and to present you faultless before the presence of his glory with exceeding joy. To the only wise Elohim, our Savior, through Yahshua the Messiah, our Sovereign, belong glory and majesty, dominion and power, both now and ever. Let us all say hallelujah. 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 All right. All right. Hallelujah. All right. You all have a wonderful day. You, you too. Thank you. Jump. All right. All right. Keith, I'll jump right back on.